next we move on to a very useful flow superposition that is a flow past circle or a flow past a cylinder with infinite length so this is the cylinder and we want to analyze the flow over this and remember we are studying ideal flows where there is no viscosity in the presence of viscosity there will be viscous stresses and all but in the absence of viscosity there will be a slip velocity at the surface so you may imagine this as being a dipole at the origin so it leads to a flow like this and a uniform incoming flow so this is comprised of a uniform flow plus a dipole okay and this entire this will be the stagnation point and this will be the stagnation streamline so let us write down the solution for the velocity potential for this flow superposition quite obviously it will be ux plus the solution of a dipole so we take the dipole to be of strength equal to so the dipole will be equal to minus 2 pi u a square ex and this particular form instead of having the form m having this particular form is quite useful because we can simplify our calculations later on so let us recall that if the strength of a dipole is m then the potential the velocity potential is m epsilon upon pi times x upon r square okay so in this case the dipole strength or the dipole was minus 2 epsilon x ex so with this dipole we obtained a velocity potential as this similarly so over here we just need to make the comparison of this expression with this expression and make the analogy with this expression so if this is the dipole strength then the expression for the velocity potential would be u a square times x upon x square plus y square okay so uh, i forgot a m over here so so there was no x it is 2 epsilon m okay where epsilon is the gap so 2 epsilon is the distance between the source and the sink and m is the strength so using 2 epsilon m as the magnitude of the dipole strength this is the velocity potential you just compare this expression with this and substitute over here so you will find that the velocity potential is given by this so the velocity potential for the combined flow that is a uniform flow plus a dipole flow is given by this you can take your time and construct the solution no need to be fast so this can be simplified to u so now x is r cos theta so this becomes what so this is r plus a square upon r times cos theta where we have made use of the fact that x is equal to r cos theta so if this is the velocity potential the streamline you can easily show that the streamline from this expression 
would be equal to minus u y minus u a square y upon x square plus y square so this boils down to so this should be u y because uh, the velocity is in case of this is del shy by del y yeah. so this can be written as u r minus a square upon r times sine theta so these two give an expression of the velocity fields in terms of r and theta so now that we have the expression for the velocities uh, for the uh, the the two the steam fun uh, the velocity potential and the steam function we can find out an expression for the velocity field so the velocity field is basically the gradient of phi so you can work it out the radial component of velocity so i am writing it down in terms of the radial components okay so the radial component will be del phi by del r and 1 upon r del phi by del theta okay you can you can easily verify that u r will be equal to capital u 1 minus a square upon r square times cos theta basically taking a derivative of this with respect to r and similarly u theta will be 1 upon r del phi del theta so u 1 plus a square upon r square okay so this is taking a division of all these things with respect to r and the derivative of cos theta will be sine theta so, uh, so minus sine theta so there will be a minus sign over here so now we have the expression for u r and u theta now on the surface of the cylinder so the surface of the cylinder is a stagnation streamline on the surface of this so this is a streamline this entire object will be a streamline so there will be no flow orthogonal into the streamline so on the surface of cylinder u r will be equal to zero and u theta will be whatever this is evaluated at r equal to a so this will become minus capital u so if r equal to a this becomes 2 sin theta okay so first of all how do we know that the the point is at r equal to a the stagnation we don't know whether this radius corresponds to r equal to a in the first place okay how to find that out we can find out at theta equal to 0 degree so at theta equal to 0 degree what is this so u theta will be equal to 0 and u r is equal to capital u 1 minus a square upon r square this is at theta equal to 0 and this u r will vanish at r equal to a obviously because this term inside the bracket will vanish at r equal to a so naturally at r equal to a we have the stagnation streamline and hence the entire streamline corresponding to this will be a stagnation streamline and hence the surface of the cylinder is at r equal to a so at r equal to a this is the value of the velocity okay this is the slip velocity at the surface now if you do not consider ideal flows there will actually be a certain velocity at the surface uh, the the velocity at the surface will be zero because of the viscous effects but because we are considering ideal flows the, this will be the velocity at the surface but this is due to no penetration boundary condition okay and the fact that if we have a streamline there will be no flow across a streamline with the slip velocity at the surface so then again we can write p infinity plus half rho u infinity square or capital u square 
is equal to p on the surface plus half rho u square and this gives us the coefficient of pressure as p minus p infinity upon half rho capital u square so this is essentially half rho capital u square minus half rho mod u square upon half rho capital u square so this is 1 minus mod u square upon capital u square now at the surface u are equal to 0 and only u theta exists and therefore mod u will be simply u theta and mod u square will be simply u theta square this is 1 minus 4 capital u square sin square theta upon capital u square so u square cancels out so 1 minus 4 sin square theta so this gives us the pressure distribution on the surface of a cylinder so if i were to plot this function 1 minus 4 sin square theta okay so suppose this is 0 this is 90 degree this is 180 degree so the distribution will look something like this so at theta equal to 0 this coefficient of uh, the pressure coefficient is equal to 1 so we are plotting on the y-axis the pressure coefficient and at theta equal to 90 when sine theta equal to 1 it will be minus 3 it will be something like this it's quite difficult to draw I mean you can use MATLAB or whatever you like to do this plot all right it will look something like this okay so there is a symmetry in the pressure distribution meaning so whatever I've plotted is between 0 to 180 that is going from 0 this is theta equal to 0 and this point will be theta equal to 180 so whatever the distribution will be on this top surface will be the same distribution on the bottom surface so because of this symmetry so there's a symmetry in the pressure distribution and this symmetry implies that there is no drag no drag acting on the object you can verify this by integrating the pressure taking the component in the direction of the uniform flow so despite there being a flow in the x direction the pressure distribution is symmetric so this paradox is called as the d'alembert paradox well the alembert paradox says that this cannot be because we do have real i mean in in the case of real flows there is actually a friction and all and actually that is all due to viscosity that is all due to the presence of viscous forces viscous stresses so for blunt objects like a ball or a golf ball there is a flow separation that takes place and the flow separation actually causes the distribution of pressure to be something like this in fact it does follow this for some for a while after which the pressure distribution deviates widely for large Reynolds number so this is the distribution of pressure for large Reynolds number okay so the breaking of symmetry along theta implies that uh, there is no net uh, there is a net drag on the object the fact that the four aft symmetry so this this is the shape of this green curve implies four aft symmetry so four aft symmetry means whatever pressure distribution is on the first hemisphere of the object is the same pressure distribution on the other side of the object okay pressure distribution over this and this are equal and hence there is no drag acting on the object but when the distribution is something like this then it means that there is a distinct departure of symmetry about this axis and the departure of symmetry the departure of the flow profile as we go from fore to aft it implies that there will be a net distribution of pressure and net viscous stress distribution on the object which will lead 
to the generation of drag. So all this will fall within the ambit of discussion of the boundary layer theory, which we, which we will do in the subsequent lectures. For now, it is sufficient to understand that ideal flows do not predict any drag acting on the object. So a simple problem that you can try uh, at your own leisure is that of a spinning ball. So a spinning cylinder. A spinning cylinder is basically comprised of multiple things. So a spinning cylinder will be basically what? It will be the flow due to a point vortex and a uniform flow. So if we have a point vortex like this, right, and if we have a uniform flow, then it will lead to a situation where there will be a stagnation streamline. So I urge you to find out the solution to this and the pressure distribution in this problem. This will be the part of an assignment.